Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a clip of a fat activist saying skinny people are offended by fat people. We're also going to be taking a look at a couple of bonus clips, including one where somebody says, don't talk about your weight loss at work, you'll make it an unsafe space. If you would like to support the channel and become one of my fellow cynics, please consider joining channel memberships. You'll get a badge next to your name, access to custom emojis, as well as top priority in my comment replies. A join button is below, as well as a join link in the description of this video. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. All right, this is Marissa Matthews, and she's going to be responding to this comment that reads, but you are also offending skinny people. How do you expect to receive love when you only give hate? You clearly don't understand how love works. See, this is a problem because I'm not offending skinny people. What's happening here is skinny people are offended by fat people. Okay. Skinny people are offended when fat people stand up for themselves against their bullying. That's offensive to skinny people for you to stand up for yourself. Go on. Skinny people are offended because fat people know their worth. So what you're saying is when a fat person believes in themselves, skinny people just can't stand it. To such a degree that it's offensive. Oh man, even though I'm living in a larger body, I'm kind of starting to believe in myself after all these years. You know that? I'm just a regular person walking down the street. Whoa, whoa, ho, 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 what in the hell? Yikes, dude, yikes. What? Oh, man. Absolutely offensive. This is damn near profane. That's true. I am obsessed with what other people are doing, and it's very offensive to me. Skinny people are offended. All of them. All of them because fat people are advocating for their own human rights and they're and to be treated like a human being. Dude, stop. Nobody knows that anybody else exists. If some people are jerks to you because you're living in a larger body, that's because they have their own issues, man. That doesn't mean that every thinner person has it out for you. Skinny people are offended because they're the ones being called out on their own oppressive behaviors. I do not like to be called oot for my oppressive behaviors. Do 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 get dunked on Canadia. I know how it's actually pronounced. So no, me advocating for fat people and wanting to be treated like a human and not to be bullied and shit, that's not offensive. Oh, okay. Well, the commenter is talking about you offending skinny people. I'm not sure specifically what they're referring to, but they go on to say, how do you expect to receive love when you only give hate? You do put a lot of negativity out there, but it's pretty much in response to other people being negative to you, so. I've said it countless times, but there's a right and a wrong way to deal with negative criticism online. Making a video showing that it made you angry is not the way, dude. You don't want to become a lol cow. And I'm not calling this person a cow or making fun of their weight. That's an actual term that refers to like a personality online that everybody starts bullying because that person keeps reacting negatively to the bullying and like making videos about it and this and that. I'm not saying it's right. It's actually mean. The reason why skinny people are offended is because they're the ones doing the oppressive behavior. So when you oppress people, it also makes you get offended by those very same people. Why would I be offended by the people that I'm oppressing? Wouldn't the people that I'm oppressing be offended by my oppression? Skinny people are offended because they're being held accountable, because they're being called out. All skinny people. So advocating for fat people? That's, that's love, buddy. That's not showing hate at all. And if you think so, then look inward. So that's not showing hate at all, and if I think so, I should look inward. Okay, let me go ahead and look inward a little bit. Oh my god. What have I been doing? Marissa's right! All this time I've been nothing but a monster! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't feel anything. When I look inward, all I hear is this. Alright, so that was weird and I disagree. I don't think that skinny people are offended by larger people at all. Some people leave you negative comments online because they're jerks and they got their own problems like I've gone over countless times. Next. Here are three benefits of being fat. If you're tired of only hearing why it's so awful to be fat, then listen up. Hey, I'm Vinny, aka Fierce Fatty, and I help. 
Hi, Fierce Fatty. Help people unlearn anti-fat bias so they can live without shame and be a fat ally. Understanding that there are benefits to being fat is going to chip away at that anti-fat bias that we all have in our brains. Okay, go on. And by the way, there are many benefits to being fat. We're going to start with just three. Number one, you get to be in community with fat people. So you get to be in community with fat people. Fat community. Not only is being in community with fat people virtually or in person filled with so much joy and fun and laughter and fat goodness. I guess I must have missed the part with all the joy and fun and laughter. I've yet to see it in this movement. There's fat goodness too? Okay, you didn't tell me about that part before. I'm starting to come around to your side. It's fun while you're like big enough to be part of the group, but what if you accidentally lost a little weight and they start shunning you? But also it protects our mental health and helps us stop internalizing anti-fat beliefs. Being fat protects our mental health or hanging out in the fat community? I would say that fat acceptance rhetoric is actually terrible for our mental health. Number two, we are incredible and resilient. If All of you? you're a fat person then it's highly likely that you've experienced shame bullying exclusion being judged left right and center all because of your body and guess what you survived no i didn't it broke me <laughs> how insensitive of you and to me that is incredible and so you've had to unfortunately learn to be resilient Number three, fat people are easy to find in a crowd. Okay, I'm gonna give you this one. Larger people are easy to find in a crowd. That's just common sense. All that other stuff you said was fairly delusional, but this one actually makes sense. Lost your friend at a concert? If they're fat, they're gonna be way easier to spot in a sea of straight-sized bodies. Unless they're also short. If your friend is very tall, you're gonna see them before anybody else. Like, oh, dang, there's Mark. Towering above everybody else. If you'd like the full list of all the benefits, you can go check out- I would like the full list of all the benefits. Out my podcast, The Fierce Fatty Podcast, episode 128. Just is that the 28 benefits of being fat? I covered that one a very long time ago. Google The Fierce Fatty Podcast, episode 128. Save this video to reference later. Remember, you're worthy. You always were. You always will be. Worthy of what? I don't know. I'm just worthy in general, this person says. And stay fierce, fatty. I will stay fierce. Thanks for calling me a fatty. All right, so that was weird, and I agree with that final one, that it's easier to find a larger person in a crowd. I don't know about those other benefits, though. Now we're going to take a look at part two of the benefits of being fat by Fierce Fatty yet again. Here are three more benefits of being fat. If you're tired of only hearing why fatness is so awful, then listen up. Okay, hit me with it. Hey, I'm Vinny, aka Fierce Fatty, and I help people unline anti-fat bias by facilitating diversity training for organizations who want to add size inclusion to their DEI efforts. All right, now Fierce Fatty is talking about size inclusion being added to DEI training. DEI training is some sort of diversity and inclusion training that usually has to do with people's races and religions and disability statuses and stuff like that. It's training around how to not discriminate against people of those various protected groups. Fierce Fatty wants to add size to the list of protected groups alongside race and disability and religion. Understanding that there are benefits to being fat is going to chip away at that anti-fat bias that we all have swirling around in our head. That's not the only thing swirling around in my head. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have any other thoughts. There are so many benefits to being fat, and the first three were covered in part one. This is part two, and let's start with number four. Many fat people have a big belly, and you know what that means? Okay, so one of the benefits of being fat, Fierce Fatty says, is that fat people have a big belly, and you know what that means. Okay, before we continue, give me a list below of the possible benefits of having a belly. Let's see. Um... Additional storage, the belly plate, like we've seen on my 600 pound life. You could put a plate there. You can perhaps put like some cutlery over here on this side and various other utensils to be used during a meal. Other than that, I'm not really thinking of too many benefits of having a large belly. I got a carrot cake on my belly plate. Shelf snack, a built in table right at the perfect location. Shelf snack, but then on screen it said snack shelf. Shelf snack. Okay, well, they meant to say snack shelf, as it says on the text there, which is what I just said. You can put stuff on it. A built-in table right at the perfect location. You're serious. This is not satire. This is, like, serious. You think this is a benefit to carry around all this excess stuff on you so that occasionally you can set something on it. 
Okay. It doesn't really seem worth all the negative health ramifications that come from obesity, but go off. Number five, being fat means that you have a built-in bigot filter. If Translation, people treat you poorly. If someone doesn't want to be friends with you or date you just because of your body size, then you have outed their bias. Well, that's true for anything, right? It's not a bigot filter. People just let you know that they don't want to be with you or they're not into you for X, Y, or Z. If you look different in any sort of way and people treat you poorly for that, I guess you also have a built-in bigot filter. Then people don't have that same advantage and often accidentally end up dating body bigots. What? How does a thin person accidentally end up dating a body bigot? So if a thin person gets with somebody that's not into larger people, they accidentally got with a body bigot, and they won't know because the body bigot didn't reject them. If you're into me or thinner people or whatever, but you're not into larger people, I don't consider you a body bigot. I consider you as having preferences that align with this and not with that. All of this, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. So anybody that's not attracted to you is a bigot. You know, I've been saying that for years. There's a lot of bigots out there that aren't into me either. Because they are bigots. And they only find out when their partner starts complaining when they put on weight. <laughs> <laughs> so if you start getting larger in a relationship and your partner doesn't like it, they're a bigot. Uh, maybe they just want you to stay the same as when they got with you. Maybe they got with you partially because of that. And gaining all of this weight, maybe they're not into it. It goes both ways, right? It's not bigotry if you're unhappy that your partner started gaining a bunch of weight. You wouldn't like it if I started gaining a bunch of weight either. Can we think of this from both sides? What if I started drinking? What if we've been together for a few years and then I just start drinking and become all lazy and just become a whole different person? You chill with that? Probably not. If I was a hard working go-getter when we got together, you would probably like to continue to see me do that. In fact, that might be one of the reasons that you got with me. Hard work is attractive, man. Pro tip, if someone is bigoted about body size, they probably have a lot of other biases too. Yeah, they probably hate disabled people too. <laughs> if you don't want to date somebody living in a larger body, you're probably the type to push somebody in a wheelchair down a flight of stairs. Oh my gosh. Number six, we are hard to kidnap. Why try and grab someone that might wait? Okay. Gonna give you that one again. Thus far, I've heard two benefits of being fat. Easier to spot in a crowd, harder to kidnap. I'm more than you. It's just too much effort. We have a bill. All right, I'm gonna have to agree with Fierce Fatty on this one. I recently made a video about a 400 pound woman who skipped out on her tab at Applebee's and then got arrested. The cops were trying to get her off the bus and to not get arrested, she basically just had to sit there like this and just keep ignoring everybody. That was on my second channel. Here's a link. Team crime deterrent on our body. Uh huh. If you'd like the full list of all the benefits, go check out my podcast, The Fierce Fatty Podcast, episode 128. Just Google Fierce Fatty Podcast 128 and you'll find it. Remember, if your organization's diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts don't include fat liberation, then you're missing out on a huge portion of the employee population. So let's fix it. A huge portion of the employee population. Do -do -do By the way, the do 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 if I'm not doing that the way that other people have done it classically, um, I don't care. So just in case you were going to inform me, like, actually, it's like boom, boom, t I don't I don't give a shit. OK, sorry. Missing out on a huge portion of the employee population. So let's fix it. OK, so I'm going to have to disagree with all of the aforementioned. Next. I'm not sure how to word this, and I don't know if it's going to come out in the right way, but for all the negatives are about being fat, I will say one positive is existing outside of the beauty standard. Okay, how is that beneficial? Which is not to say that I'm ugly, um, uh, or I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's the whole point. Like, knowing securely that I will never fit the beauty standard at first was something that sucked and I had to learn how to cope with that but then once I got through that I was like god damn it is quite peaceful going out in public and like being ugly in peace like okay this is weird so it's very liberating to go out in public and be ugly in peace I believe this person is saying that they've just accepted the fact that they'll never lose weight and conform to the beauty standard or whatever. And it's very liberating to not care anymore. That's weird because for a lot of other people, they only stopped caring what everybody else thought when they got all confident. 
most people get all confident by working hard on themselves in various ways, not just physically. So it's interesting to do nothing and then just give up on what people think about you. I didn't know it was that simple. Go on. There's something to be said. I've had to get very used to people finding me repulsive and so- All right, calm down. Where are you getting any of this from? Is this like just a ploy to get people in the comments to be like, you're not ugly, you're beautiful or whatever. So that has awarded me this like really tough skin when it comes to that. I don't- I submit that if we truly didn't care what anybody else thought, we wouldn't make a video telling everybody how much we don't care what everybody else thought. I believe that this is overcompensating. I didn't want to be friends with you guys anyway. I don't care if you find me beautiful or not. I'll live. I won't. I won't live if you guys think I'm not beautiful. <laughs> I know that about myself, and I'm kind of grateful for that, I guess. All right, so that was somebody else going over one more benefit of being fat. This time, the benefit is that you are so far outside of the beauty standard or whatever that you can stop caring about it and go live your life, I guess. You definitely shouldn't spend your time obsessing about what other people think about you, but if it were just as simple as saying, you know what? I don't care anymore what other people think. Everybody would be doing it. You definitely shouldn't care what everybody else thinks. You should be free to go live your life. But typically that comes along when you develop your confidence. Like I said, next. I got this comment on one of my posts and it reads, I just went to a hybrid job after eight years remote and the diet culture and weight loss talk is horrible. I eat in my car now. Okay. People talk about their diets and weight loss at work, and it's triggering this commenter to such a degree that they go and eat in their car. I've got to say that's so heartbreaking, so alienating and not inclusive that this person feels like the safe space for them to have their lunch is in their car. It's not inclusive for people to talk about their diets and weight loss? If people just talking about their diet and weight loss triggers you to such a degree that you have to run away and leave the room and go eat in your car, you're the one with the issue, my friend. You shouldn't see this as, oh my God, these bigots have made this space unsafe. You should see this as, wow, that really triggered me and made me literally run out of the room like an infant. I have a lot of issues around this topic. Personally, me, not anybody else, just me. Can you imagine, dude? Yeah, so I've been exercising more and I've been eating healthier. I'm trying to lose like 15 pounds. I've kind of let myself go a little bit, you know? Time to take control of this situation. What? You're gonna lose weight? You're gonna lose weight? Yeah, I just figure I'm getting older, you know, my mobility's being affected. Whoa! What the hell? Was there a spider on your chair or something? What the heck? Susan just completely ran out of the room crying. I think that's a hilarious way to confront any of your personal problems. All right, Jeff, I know that you've worked here for a couple years, but the past couple of weeks, your register keeps coming up short. And uh, unfortunately, I had to check the cameras and saw that you were taking money out of it. Oh, snap, for real? Well, you see, the thing about that is um, basically what had happened. What's that? Yeah, so the cops are on the way. Hey, whoa, 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 hey! and not in the office. And unfortunately, this is so common. I've heard this story, similar stories, many, many, many times that the workplace is just not safe for people living in bigger bodies. It's not safe because people were talking about wanting to lose weight and whatnot. How is that not safe? I think that maybe you don't understand what the word safe means, which is pretty bizarre because it's a very common word and it's not at all complex. There's not a whole lot of nuance to the word safe. It's pretty cut and dry, pretty straightforward. So I'm pretty confused why you're confused on its proper usage. So people talking about wanting to improve themselves makes a space unsafe. Dramatic much, dude? First of all, nobody even said anything negative to this person at all. So I have no idea what you're talking about. People are just talking about wanting to lose weight themselves. They're not saying that that person who's complaining in this comment is fat. They're not saying that the person in this comment needs to lose weight or make fun of them or anything. They're just talking about their own personal weight loss. If you choose to be triggered by that and run away like a literal child, that's on you. 
It's so normalized to talk about bodies, to talk about diet, to talk about how we're not uh, okay with our bodies and we want to make them smaller. Yeah, it is normalized because it's normal talk. People also talk about like a degree that they want to get or a house that they want to buy and other things that they aspire to do. So if somebody talks about how they want to make a bunch of money and get rich, does that make it an unsafe space for poor people? All of this in front of people who have bigger bodies. Not acceptable. And it Nobody should have to censor themselves because you are there. In certain circumstances, it can definitely be rude if there's a larger person there and they're larger than you. We've talked about this before and you're like, oh man, I need to lose weight. There could be some passive aggressiveness to that, sure. But in general, talking about wanting to lose weight at work with your colleagues is fine. It doesn't make the workplace inclusive or safe. It doesn't make it exclusive or unsafe either. It just makes it a place with human beings that talk about stuff. Hey, I'm Vinny, aka Fierce Fatty, and I help people unlearn anti-fat bias by facilitating diversity training organizations who want to add. All right, so this is Fierce Fatty's hustle. They go around and try to get companies to add body size to the list of protected groups alongside race, disability, status, etc. I wonder if this person has actually had any takers. Has anybody actually taken this size inclusivity training and forced all their employees to go through it as well? Dear Lord, I hope not. Size inclusion to their DEI efforts. If you want to make your workplace safe for people in bigger bodies, then consider adding fat liberation to the company's DEI efforts. Right, dude, we're not gonna censor all the employees from talking about stupid crap that shouldn't be offensive to anybody, just to appease you. Janet is not getting written up for talking about her Pilates class. Get over it. And if that's something you'd like to learn more about, then go to weightbiastraining.com. Feverishly starts typing in weightbiastraining.com. I need this info quick. Just kidding. All right, so that was weird and I disagree. So what do you think of the clips that we just saw? Are skinny people offended by fat people? Are there many benefits to being fat? And should you not talk about your weight loss at work because it might trigger your coworkers? Leave a comment below. Happy Thursday, everybody. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Don't leave me